<coughs> All right, hi everybody. Tonight I'll be uh, refuting the claim that eating organic produce has a significantly positive impact on us. Um, first off, according to the Mayo Clinic online, the organic food is defined as products that um, are products that are labeled as organic must have at least 95% <coughs> organic, um, and foods that are labeled as all natural are different than organic because they're not, they don't follow the same guidelines set by the USDA. Um, first three, the first of the three points that is brought up by the speaker is that organic produce is healthier for our bodies. Um, in response to that, organic food is not bred with the hormones and chemicals that help boost our immune system and bodily functions uh, with extra vitamins and minerals that they give. These growth hormones are specifically designed to help the animal or plant grow and the consumer obtain the most nutritional valuable value as possible. Um, the second point that the speaker has brought up is that organic produce is safer for the environment. Um, with all the technical, technological advances um, in the world today, it is highly unlikely that we will again see a, um, such known as the domino effect as DDD, as DDT was put over 50 years ago. Um, the pesticides that are used today are environmentally friendly as possible and they do exactly what they're named to do. Uh, they rid the crops of unwanted pests such as bugs and diseases that may strike the crop load. Uh, according to the EPA, the amount of pesticides that people are likely to be exposed to is too small to uh, pose a risk. Also, without pesticides, even the water that we drink and use recreationally would not be safe to use. Pesticides contribute to the enhanced human health by preventing <coughs> disease outbreaks through the control of rodent and insect populations. Um, Nowadays, with the strict regulations placed on pesticides, it seems safer to eat food that has been treated with pesticides. Um, and personally, with many experience, with many years working in the pest control industry, I have yet to see a serious case of pesticide poisoning with the uh, right precautions taken. Um, the third and final point that the speaker brought up is that organic produce is beneficial for farms. However, personally knowing uh, many dairy farmers, it seems that all, that all organic food is the last thing that is needed. Requiring a dairy farm to go organic would require cows bred from a natural line without any ancestors injected with any artificial hormones, um, pure organic feed and materials which would be very expensive and hard to get, and no vitamins or health shots to protect them, protect the animals, or prevent them from getting sick. Uh, converting farms and dairies into organic uh, would, be, would not be beneficial to the economy because it would force them to start from nothing <coughs> and simply because uh, it would force <coughs> them to start from literally nothing because none of the materials and products that they have um, would, are, would be usable. Uh, the rising, uh, let's see. All, lastly, um, pesticides are used for food prevention by helping food stay fresh longer. With the shortage of farms and dairies, it is crucial to make the most out of every plate of food we can get. Um, organic food is not the answer to health problems because of its rising costs, lower demand, and shorter shelf life. Foods that are protected from diseases and enhanced with hormones help the, bo help the body fight off infections and grow stronger. All right, Cody labeled the main point and the secondary points pretty clearly. The challenge on definition, I think, is important if you're going to be making an argument that suggests that all natural is not what the advocate was talking about, and therefore any evidence that they were using that had that as a component in it ought to be excluded. You don't really get into that argument much later on, so spending the time on that, I don't know that it benefits you that much. Uh, your labeling on the first point suggests that there is, in fact, some nutritional benefit from these kinds of uh, 
hormones that you're talking about, and that's a good counterclaim, but there's no evidence on that point. It's uh, largely an assertion. The one place there where you had a specific piece of information that contradicted the claims presented by the advocate was on the dangers of pesticides and the EPA minimizing that risk by suggesting that the amount of exposure is relatively low. And in fact, in the long run, it has uh, uh, the uh, outcome of enhancing human health. So there's one place where you do, in fact, have a good piece of evidence that provides counterclaim uh, for the argument. There's not much analysis of the advocate's evidence on any of these points. In fact, you largely ignore the evidence that they provide and whether or not their reasoning is valid. Most of your arguments are counterclaims, but the only one that you provide any evidence on is that one. When you get to the third point, again, your labeling is clear. I think there's probably a very logical argument here. I like the way it sounds like you've got some personal experience on this. You don't really tell us what it is, and that might help a little bit. It may be making it a little more um, believable without any evidence. but. Uh, you know, is there likely to be a cost? I think there probably is. How sub substantial it is, I don't really know, and you don't really tell us, and so it, it largely comes down to this notion that there's got to be some benefit from these things because we're using them, and if we didn't have them or if we had to do something differently, it would be very costly. And again, this is a place where I think you've got a good counterclaim without any evidence on it, but there's no analysis of the evidence and the reasoning the advocate used on this particular point. Uh, on the last point, it sounds like, I'm not sure if you were talking about food, food preservation, because it sounded like that's what you were discussing, uh, not just food prevention. I'm not even sure I know what food prevention is, but the food preservation issue, I think there's a good point there that it sustains the amount that's available, that's going to affect costs. You've got, a good, again, a good explanation of what the idea here is. What we need is a little bit of follow-up in some uh, source citation. Here there was a little bit of a contrast to what the advocate was talking about, but again, there, there's not any specific reference to the advocate's evidence or arguments on these points. This is like a general claim, and it's a good counterclaim, um, but again, without any data on it, it's you know, not necessarily any better than what the advocate said. All right, thank you.